Uh, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And then he goes on to say, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So we see something that the Lord is uh, <clears throat> clearly uh, desiring for his sheep. Um, and he's also saying, this is the... Uh, this is the capability of my sheep, right? They will hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. In other words, you know, this is what he's desiring for us as his sheep and him, him being the shepherd. This is what he's desiring, that we hear his voice, that we know him, he knows us, and we follow him, that we hear his voice and we follow, follow him, you know. Um, and this is something that um, that we are designed for, and this is something that that he desires from each one of us. Okay, um, so we uh, we should always remember that, and this is what God desires: that I hear His voice and I follow Him. You know, uh, many times we um, we take the following bit and say, "Yes, you know, I need to follow Him. I need to be obedient to Him. Uh, I need to do all that." Um, I must do it. The first part of it is that <clears throat> we need to hear his voice. And uh, when we when we consider that, he's saying that you know you're designed to hear his voice. And not only is my desire that you hear my voice, uh, in other words, he's saying you are designed to hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. We are capable of hearing. Right? I just want to reiterate that again. That. Uh, even as we pray this morning, we'll just pray that, Lord, you sharpen my hearing. I thank you for designing me to hear your voice. I thank you that uh, you you are speaking so I can hear your voice. And uh, and your desire is that, that I hear your voice. And thank you, Lord. Right? May, may I hear your voice clearly. And uh, whatever is uh, hindering, whatever is uh, causing any confusion, let it be moved out in the name of Jesus. Right? Let's Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. And um, Lord, even as we draw near, God, we thank you for John 10, 27. Lord, your reminder that uh, your desire is that we hear your voice, oh God, and that you have designed us to hear your voice, Father God. Um, Lord, even before we follow you, oh God, begin to follow you, God. This is how you have designed us, Lord. And so, God, this morning, we just want to thank you that each one of us are capable and able to hear your voice, Father God. And Lord, I pray that um, if any of us uh, is struggling, uh, if, uh, if we are, Lord, are struggling to hear, and if we are at the crossroads of making decisions, and if we need your wisdom, God, we, we thank you. We rejoice that uh, this is how you have designed us. And uh, this is your desire for each one of us, God, that we very clearly hear your voice. And just because you are our shepherd, and you, Lord, your your declaration over us, your rejoicing over us is 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 this that you know us, Lord. You know us, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, we are known by you, the Good Shepherd. We thank you, Master. And this morning, Father God, we we commit ourselves to you. We, Lord, uh, submit all our Lord uh, ambitions and plans and desires and everything, Lord, into your mighty hands, God. And we pray that you would. Uh, make things clear, establish things for us, God, even as we go forward in the things that you have prepared for us. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Christian leadership, um, I think where we stopped was um, about uh, life plan, right? Uh, I think this is towards the end of the, you know, the first section. Uh, about uh, leadership and Jesus as our leader, and we looked at various things. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, Isaiah 46 verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. Uh, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Right? We looked at that scripture. So uh, he's saying, my counsel shall stand. His counsel, his uh, his plans um, will stand, uh, will, which means that it will remain, 
right? Uh, and through ups and downs and everything, his counsel stands. So, um, you know, even as we pray today, our privilege is to hear God's voice and plan according to it, right? And uh, well, God puts certain desires in us, puts certain dreams in us. Uh, we just need to be mindful of that and discerning of that because uh, he puts certain things in us, um, certain capabilities, and uh, the way he has designed us, it's unique. Like um, we, we don't have to compare ourselves with anyone else. He has put certain, uh, you know, certain uh, things that we are moved by, you know, certain burdens in our hearts. And uh, we look at some others and, uh, well, they are not burdened the same way, you know, about maybe certain causes that you stand up for, that you are moved, stirred. And so um, you realize that, hey, okay, I've been fashioned this way. Right? I've been fashioned this way to uh, maybe to take up this cause or these causes uh, for the sake of the kingdom, right, for the for the cause of Christ, and um, and that's how He has uniquely fashioned us. And He's also put put certain likes and dis dislikes and all that, and and everything goes together, flows together, even as He leads us. So in our, uh, we looked at life plan. You know, it's it's good for us if we would, uh, you know, we we saw that how planning is important, and how planning is a series of steps, and uh, it. Uh, we need to plan in order to achieve these goals, uh, um, in order to move towards these goals. So um, it's good for us. So we saw that God is a God who plans, and his plans stand, his counsel stands. So the, God is not against us planning. Okay. So definitely, um, I just want to reiterate that you know, we can plan, and we we have the privilege of drawing from God's wisdom. We have the privilege of drawing from, uh, you know, His wisdom and His leading, uh, and we can plan. Okay, so the, the so many times what happens is we are, we become very very passive, right? In our, in our lives, uh, we don't want to plan, and and we we just think that okay, if it happens, it happens. You know that famous I don't know whether it's Latin or Greek. You know, ki sera sera. Right, saying you know, if it happens, it happens. Uh, and uh, as believers, there's a certain you know twist to that. Right, we say if it happens, it's God's will. If it does not happen, it's not. Or if it's God's will, it will happen. You know, we we forget uh, our will is also involved, right? In in things happening in our lives, our will is involved. Uh, so we we just sometimes become. We make the mistake of becoming very, very passive. And God, in His grace, you know, um, well, He He takes us along. He He makes things happen for us. He He brings those options. He brings those choices in front of us, and He leads us. But His desire, you know, if you if you read that verse, um, what do the what do the sheep do after hearing His voice? They follow, right? So they do it. They hear intentionally, and they and they follow, right? So this following bit is also there. It's it's not like it's going to happen, right? If there's a place that God wants to take us, we need to follow actively. We need to intentionally hear and follow in order to reach, because he's leading us. Let's say he's going forward. You know, have this picture of someone who's going forward and saying, you know, come, just follow me, and I, I'll take you to that place. Uh, and we will reach that place. And if we are saying, oh, it will happen, but we are just there passively and not actively seeing, looking, focusing on the person who's actually going ahead, um, then we realize that, hey, we are in the same place. We've not reached the destination, right? And then um, and we begin to you know, justify it or reason it out and, and say all kinds of things, right? Um, so our life plan, it's it's nothing wrong. It's important, but involve God in it. You know, involve God in it because He desires. He has good plans for us. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. He has good thoughts for us. John ten ten talks about how He has come to give us life and life in its fullness. Right. So His desires, His thoughts, His plans are good for us, and He intends for us as His sheep, even as He leads us as a good shepherd, for us to hear and follow. Okay, 
So let's look at uh, you know a uh, life plan and how we can have uh, a life plan and what we can do in order to uh, just show uh, um, you know a sample. This is something that we looked at uh, in one of our Sunday services. Uh, this was just recently. Um, so I'm just going to share that uh, table with us. Okay, um, just a minute. Okay. Um, right. Okay, I hope that's coming up. Okay. Right, so you see that, right? that table where, um, let's say, you know, the first column is the stage of life or the season of life that we are in, right? And uh, we can plan um, according to seasons, right? So let's say we can plan in incremental time periods of, let's say, five years or 10 years or even four years, six years, and so on, whatever. Right, and prayerfully consider these uh, chunks of time. And so, let's say, you know, you, you for example, if we've taken um, five years, and then we're looking at that age, you know, you put your age, and then thirty to thirty-five. Let's say, what is the plan? You know, uh, for example, it could be this. You know, the purpose could be demonstrate kingdom living in. You know, maybe it's a working professional for a working professional in technology and business okay so uh, someone who's maybe an entrepreneur maybe a you know working professional so in that age group or in that phase of life 30 to 35 you now this is this is the plan okay so how are you going to ensure that this happens you know what is what is the plan to grow in to the next level in all these areas okay uh, in all areas, meaning when it comes to spiritual life, personally, family, children, finances, professional, Christian ministry, and so on. So, um, so what are we going to pursue? You know, it's it's good to be specific. Uh, maybe in spiritual life, it's good to be specific and say, you know, I I'd like to achieve this in this uh, season. You know, in this five years, I'd like to come to a place of maturity. I'd like to come to a place of uh, you know, uh, um, knowing certain things. I'd like to come to a place of learning uh, uh, this, or I'd like to come to a place of, you know, reading through the Bible a number of times, whatever, you know. So we can have, you know, maybe two or three things in each of these areas, right? Personal life, um, family, finances, children, um, and if if you're a dad, if you're a mom, um, if you're a mother, father, so you know what is it that you would like to do in order to help your children, or what is it that you want to do for your children, right, or your child? Um, so we can be specific. You know, I I would like to spend more time, or I'd like to um, you know take some time to teach this skill my child you know my your child maybe 30 35 you are 30 35 and maybe your child is like five years or so and and uh, you could you know specifically write out like i know of a of uh, this person he's a working professional uh, but every saturday or most saturdays you know uh, i shouldn't say every saturday maybe some saturdays it, it gets missed up but most saturdays he takes time to teach his children about about finances, about money, right? Um, so the right way of handling money, and uh, his kids are teenagers, so he takes time at home, uh, maybe an hour or so, just to tell them the basics uh, of uh, of finances. You know, what is what is money all about? What can money do? Um, how should you handle money? You know, saving, expense, budgets, uh, and also the biblical perspective of money, right? So he's teaching them at that at that young age, so that they remember, and uh, and you know, at that impressionable age, okay, the important, and also they they uh, learn to be they will learn to be responsible 
uh, when it comes to handling money. So things like that, right? We can be specific. So when when you when we pray, when we ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that I should do? Well, He has promised that we will hear His voice. You know, in all these areas. It's not just about understanding of scripture or, you know, uh, what does this mean, Lord? Uh, you know, this verse. It's about all these areas. It's about practical, everyday, you know, living, daily living, right? So we go to him, we plan, and uh, and what about your work? You know, what is it that you would like to see in your work? Maybe you're, you're a working professional. What is it that you would like to see? Maybe your ministry. Uh, what is it that you would like to see? Okay, it takes time to. Uh, it's good to take some time to take, um, you know, as we say, zoom out. Take maybe a day to to think through these things and put it down, right? Um, so this is something that you know all of us can uh, really engage in. Uh, let me just show you another. Uh, Another picture of planning. Um, okay. So this is how it would look, you know, if we would um, if we would fill it up, right? Um, of course, the pursuit is just having one uh, one area, which is just the profession. Okay, so let's say the purpose is to become a tech entrepreneur, launch a tech startup, etc. Uh, it just has one pursuit, so it is there. Uh, but similarly, we could have you know other areas also: profession, marriage, um, everything else. Right. So uh, it would be you know you see this phase two years then four years, then again, maybe two to four years, and so on. So we, we have those plans. Uh, and and it's exciting to dream with God, because he has plans for us, he has dreams for us, and uh, and put these down, right? Um, so that's one part of it, OK? Um, so that's one part of it. Uh, so we are not being presumptuous. We are not being arrogant. We are not being boastful. Okay, so the many, many times we, you know, why do we stop short of doing it? Um, because we do not want to be boastful. Like for example, we are reminded in the book of, uh, you know, James, right? James chapter four, uh, verse thirteen. Okay, James chapter four and verse thirteen um, says, "Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit." Okay, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Okay, so uh, so we we encounter these verses and then we are like, okay, why should I even think of tomorrow or the day after? Here we are talking about like you know a, uh, you know a fair bit of time, like five years or ten years, right? So why should I even think? So let it just happen. Um, forgetting that, um, you know, if you look at verses 15 and uh, 16 and so on, so he says here, yeah, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we should live and do this or that. Okay, so it's not wrong to put that out, but it is, if you look at verse 16, it says, now you boast in your arrogance and all such boasting is evil. Okay, so what what is what is the person ought to say? The person ought to include the Lord if the Lord wills. So which means you're you are going to Him and saying, Lord, what is your will? Like what is your desire? What is your choice in this, Lord? You know, this is what I sense. Um, this is what <clears throat> I'm desiring. But you know, what is it? Right. And sometimes you know, it's like um, we we have this desire. It's good. And like we see in Philippians chapter four, <clears throat> Philippians chapter four talks about what are those things that we are supposed to meditate on. Now that's a filter that we can run through, right? That's a check that we can run through. It is good. Is it holy? <clears throat> is it excuse me? Is it virtuous? It is pure. Is it of good report? Right? It says think on these things. Okay, so we run through that test, 
you run through that, you know, it's 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 a it's a desire, it's a it's a deep desire, it's a stirring. Uh, there's nothing unethical, there's nothing immoral in it, and uh, there's a deep deep desire, right? Your intentions are good, and you feel that you've designed to do this, you're created to do this, and uh, it brings you pleasure, and you're sure that it bring God's heart. It'll uh, it, you know it'll delight God's heart as well, right? So you put that down, right? And the Lord will actually correct the Lord, if there is anything that the Lord uh, in, in our you know journey that needs correction, that needs tweaking, that needs uh, any course correction. The Lord will do it because He is He is good. He's a good Father, and he, he He's not going to say, "Okay, you make a mistake. I'm going to wait till you make a mistake, and then I will I will see." You know, when you fall down, then I will see. No, you know, our, the posture of our heart is God. Um, what is it that you want, God? I'm, I'm going with this understanding, but I know that you are infinite in your understanding. But you know, you're open. You know, you're open to make any corrections. You're open to make any changes, God. And the Lord will, right? So, so the thing is to to plan. Okay, that's part one. The second, the uh, second part of it is to pursue that plan. Okay, pursuing the plan or the purposes of God. Okay, so let me just share that uh, also with you. Okay, this is also something that we looked at uh, uh, on Sunday, uh, one of the Sundays, pursuing the purpose. Okay, If you look at uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 38, but he said to them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. Okay. So he he knew the purpose. He knew what plans he had, God had for him, and he said, "Let's do that. Okay, let us go there." So what was he doing? He was actually pursuing that. Right. This is the purpose of God. This is the plan of God. That God has for me. So now I need to pursue, or I need to um, uh, work that out, or live that out, right? Or I need to action it. In my life, execute it, implement it in my life, right? So um, we see that. Um, so he understood this purpose, and we see that in John chapter twelve. He said, "You know, should I say, take this cup from me? No, but for this purpose I have come, and so on." Paul also says, you know, something very similar, right? Uh, Philippians three and verse twelve: Not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Okay, So Christ has laid hold of me with a plan and a purpose. So I am going to press on Okay, that I may lay hold of that. In other words, what is he saying? You know, Christ has already you know, in his wisdom and uh, and uh, you know, goodness, he has laid hold of me for something. Okay, he has created, he has redeemed me, he has um, you know uh, visited me with salvation, and I've experienced all that. I'm in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of life, in the, in the kingdom of light, and he has laid hold of me and put me in this for something, right? And that's something I also want to have a strong grip of, and I want to press on into it. Right? That's what he says. Let's read that again. Philippians 3.12, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on. You know, many times we want to wait till we are, you know, we have reached a certain uh, I don't know. We we think that okay, I will. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. Yes, there's some truth to it, right? The Lord is preparing and then commissioning, preparing us, sharpening us, getting us ready, and then commissioning, right? But the the thing is, if we are, if we continue to wait, if you continue to wait, he's saying we're not ready yet. We're not ready yet. Then we also miss out. Okay, he's saying that not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that, right? So he's pressing on into the purposes that God has for him. So in that pressing into the purposes, or pressing on into those purposes, is also the preparation. Like in one sense, you know, you're preparing so that you can lay hold of that 
for which Christ has laid hold of you. Right? You're preparing, sharpening. He's also preparing. He's, he's preparing us. He's commissioning. Uh, he's bringing us to that place of commissioning. And there's all, always the season. You know, there is this one season of living, and then he takes us into the next season of living. Right? Okay. So, so it is an adventure. We need to pursue the purposes of God. So we. So one thing that we understand is, okay, we plan, and those plans will not happen unless we journey into it, right? unless we pursue the purposes. Okay, so which means that we take those steps that are required. Okay, so uh, the reasoning is, oh, it looks like it's a fleshly attempt. It looks like it's just, uh, you know, uh, it's, it looks like some human reasoning and um, all that is happening there you know where is god in it well god is in there in every step god is there in every step we are including him right we are not isolating god right so in the purposes in the walking through or journeying into the purposes of god uh, he is very much there in each and every step okay so um while we pursue the things of God, we know that uh, some things that we need to see. Okay, uh, we see that yes, uh, so we we could make some mistakes, or there could be some uh, some hindrances, something that could happen. Okay, and it could happen because of you know these four these four uh, you know, categories. Okay. One is our personal choice top left corner the personal choice so we make a personal choice we make personal decisions and uh, we make mistakes right um, we could make some choices good choices and we could you know uh, pursue the our journey into the purposes plans implement or we could also make some poor choices some poor decisions some mistakes which hamper slow down our journey okay then well some of the things that we could face could be because of people right uh, it could be opposition it could be support right it could be attempt to stop thwart the plan and purpose of god people could do that right people in their sincerity to protect sincerity to care uh, might actually speak some discouraging things right? when we think about well, the, this is the plan and this is the purpose and people might actually you know prayerfully support or they could also oppose right? and sometimes these opposition is uh, they you know they feel that okay they're doing us some good you know they like um, like peter was said to the Lord, you know, it, it shall not be so for you, Lord. And the Lord said, you know, um, well, the Son of Man will die and rise again. And and Peter was, you know, not mindful. He was thinking in a fleshly manner in that instant. Right? And, and the Lord had to rebuke. And uh, he, um, you know, he was actually speaking from a different source. Peter speaking as inspired, not by, you know, by God, but he was, by Satan, so he, the Lord has to had to say, you know, uh, and rebuke Satan. So it could be people. Then thirdly, <clears throat> it could be Satan himself, right, and the powers of darkness opposing, challenging, because Satan knows that you'd be a, you are a force to reckon with when your will is is completely sold out to the will of God. Right when when he knows that okay you're passionately going after the things of God, so therefore, yeah, Satan tries to oppose, but you know, and you both you and I know that that we are more than conquerors, and greater is He who is in us than He that is in the world. And Luke ten nineteen, the fact that we have been given the authority right, over Satan, over uh, snakes and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. So, uh, so that's one thing to be mindful of, to remind us of. Well, Satan will go about like a roaring lion, trying to intimidate, trying to right, devour. 
uh, but we need to be we need to preempt we need to use our authority okay then then there could be some unexpected situations um, that that are beyond our control right uh, and we might have to navigate through that also okay so uh, some things that that we might be that we might have to be mindful of is um, are these right distractions okay um if we actually when we when we when we hear heard when we spend time with god when we've heard uh, what he wants for us and we've written it down and as a life plan and uh, it helps us it how in what way does it help it gives us clarity right it gives us clarity it, it gives us a certain things you know direction in life so we know that we can go in wholeheartedly for certain things and say no to other things in life right go wholeheartedly after certain things and say no to certain other things like um a friend uh, a missionary couple right who have been preparing for they've been preparing for many years to go into some uh, difficult nation it was a uh, it's a difficult nation that they have been preparing uh, they've been <clears throat> learning the language the customs the culture it's because they're not of that nation so they've been learning that and and looking for opportunities to enter in and so on so so for them there are certain things um, that um, certain decisions that are no for them in the sense um, they're not you know very interested in buying a property or settling down in that sense right buying a property buying a they they stay in a rented place and they do not because they are very clear that god has called them to another nation and the time that they are spending in the nation where they are is preparatory time okay so they don't want to they don't want to put the roots down you know say that okay because that is not the territory that is not where god has called them so they know that they need to go into that other place which is far more difficult far more challenging um, and um, well, uh, dangerous even, right? But uh, but they know that they are called to that. So so they don't want to put down roots in that sense, you know. Right? And they also live a very minimalistic uh, living, right? very light in the sense, uh, well, they do use technology, laptops and everything, but, um, and they have their profession as HR consultants and uh, I mean, he's a HR consultant. Uh, and she's um, I'm not very sure what she but um, um, but the thing is that they live light they don't want to accumulate things um, material things because they know that one day they have to move and then uh, God's been putting in their heart so they they want to live light you know and uh, so that's that's something that's the choice so it actually helps them it helps them to make those choices it helps them not to get distracted okay so uh, avoid distractions because they, they know that okay this is what god has called and this is what i need to do so they planned it out in this season of life this is what god has called okay second thing will there be mistakes there could be right um we we, we might make some mistakes we may, we may not. We may, uh, we may make some mistakes. We might make some mistakes, but we have to, at the end of the day, understand that God is able to um, redeem those, redeem us from those mistakes. Right? That He is bigger, He is greater, and He's able to redeem us. Uh, the thing is, we are not willfully making those mistakes. Right? Uh, we learn from those mistakes. And uh, our hearts are sensitive to his leading. Sometimes, yes, you know, we might be totally blindsided by certain things. Maybe we we act in our in our flesh. Uh, maybe we didn't really ask him. We just rushed in. Maybe um, there could be some mistakes. But we need to understand that. Uh, well, our God is bigger than that, right? and He's able to re uh, redeem us from those mistakes. Uh, I always like to look at it like those Google, you know, Google Map routes. 
so the Google Map will never say, you know, this is the end of the road. Have you tried it? Right? There's always a rerouting. Right? You go and you're following the, you know, your destination. There's always a rerouting. You know, you take you take a wrong turn, uh, a, a turn that is, you know, not as there, that is not there in the map. You do the opposite of that. There is a rerouting. Well, that means the distance becomes more. That means the time taken to reach the destination is, well, it depends. It could be less, it could be more. Um, if it's a mistake, it's it's more. But there's a rerouting. Right? That's what Google Map does. And with God, you know, he's even able to redeem the time. Right? Um, so that's the beauty of it. Right. Maybe you was thinking, God, you know, I just lost so much time uh, doing these things. You know, I, I suddenly realized that uh, I need to get back on track, and I'm getting back on track. And I'm, oh, there's so much regret, God, so many years maybe wasted, and all that. Well, God is able to redeem that. God, God is able to fast track certain things. Um, just trust Him. Right? He will. He's able to, um, you know, be that catalyst to move us to push us into certain things, right? OK, so there could be mistakes, but um, when we surrender, when we repent, he ensures that we are back on track. OK, then there are challenges, right? The Lord said, in this world, we will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome. So we have the overcomer who is in us, right? And we also see that the Lord Paul declaring that he causes us to triumph. He leads us in a triumphant procession in Christ Jesus. Right? Uh, he causes us to triumph. So yes, there will be challenges, but you know, this is how we face challenges, saying um, with, with a victor's mentality, with a victory mentality, saying that, OK, this is a challenge, but I'm not going to be down and out. I'm not going to be destroyed by this challenge. I'm not going to be flattened by this challenge. Uh, I'm going to face this challenge as a victor, as the victorious one, as the triumphant one. Right. So uh, I just want to read that verse, Second Corinthians two and verse fourteen. Okay. Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Right. Thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Okay, Through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So uh, when you think about you know, certain phases of our life, certain seasons of our life, and, and we might, uh, you know, we might be like Joseph, you know, wrongly accused, put into prison, for no fault of ours, you know, while we are holding on to our integrity and we and we think that, okay, you know, it's, you know, how do I face this challenge, right? It is to, we need to face it from, not from a victim uh, mentality, but with a triumphant, victorious uh, mindset and mentality, saying that, you know, the Lord will cause me to triumph in Christ. Okay, no matter how weak that, Voices, or no matter how weak that a declaration is, right? We we declare it in faith, saying, "This is what I believe. This is what the Lord will do. He will reroute. He will, you know, change things. Right? Uh, he will cause us to triumph in what seems to be like defeat. He will cause us to uh, triumph." Okay. So then, um, people, right? Um, so we learn to work with people. People might oppose, people might challenge, people might be encouraging, people might be discouraging, but we we learn to you know journey with people. We learn to work with people. We learn to bless them, uh, irrespective of whether you know what their response is to them, to us or not. Okay. They could also be unexpected situations where uh, you know they could be God-appointed surprises. Where uh, you know, God's, we see God's favor, we see a season of you know uh, uh, abound, abundant blessings and so on, and we didn't even expect that, right? Um, so, but we we trust God, and like Romans eight and uh, verse twenty eight thirty seven says, and I and we know that all things 
work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Okay. That all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Okay. So um, again, I just want to say that we cannot be passive in our pursuit of uh, the purposes of God. Okay. Uh, we just need to be intentional pursuing the plans, pursuing the purposes. Um, if you look at um, you know what Paul instructed Timothy, and, uh, he said very clearly, you know, maybe we have received instructions, maybe we have received uh, you know prophecies and uh, and, and so on, and um, and and we're just saying, you know, we're just being passive about it, maybe. I'm saying, okay, God, you said this, uh, this would happen, and uh, maybe we are, you know, we 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 didn't engage with the word of God. You know, God gave His word, uh, but we didn't really, you know, receive it in faith or actively pursue the, uh, the word of God to see it to completion. Right? Um, this is what Paul says in First Timothy chapter one and verse eighteen. Right? He says, "This charge." I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which some have, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. Okay, so what is he saying? He's saying, you know, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, According to the prophecies previously made, so he's he's actually charging, you know, in the sense he's he's saying this is a command, Timothy. This is what you need to do. According to the prophecies that were previously made uh, over you, by them, you know, by those prophecies, that you may wage the good warfare, okay, this fight of faith. You take that, use that in your warfare, right? Because they are word word of God, or words of God. Right, so you take that and use it. Let them be weapons in the warfare. The words that he has spoken, you take it and you use it. So, um, so these were prophecies, right? So Timothy would have been told, Timothy, you know, this is what God wants you wants you to become, or this is what God says that He will He will uh, do to you, or this is where He's going to take you. This is where you know you will be a blessing to many. You will be a all kinds of you know uh, words that are spoken over him before he was you know they laid hands and they commissioned him and uh, he's in Ephesus and and so Paul is just reminding him you know I want to remind you that this I want to actually command you that with these prophecies you fight the good warfare so so this mentality that Timothy is expected to have with all these words that God has spoken, with all these prophecies that God has you know, uh, uh, declared through his people, is that he takes it and he fights the good warfare. So what is he doing? He's engaging with the word of God. Right? He's not being passive. He's intentionally, he's taking it, and he's, when, when he faces those challenges, right? when he faces uh, satanic opposition, when he faces challenges, maybe when he faces discouragement from people, and uh, he's got this whole thing written down. He's got this, you know, planned out, uh, uh, I suppose, and and with these prophecies, he's going to face any opposition to those plans, right? Uh, any opposition from the world, any opposition, uh, any may maybe something from within, you know, fears and and doubts and and discouragement. And uh, in fact, Paul says in Second Timothy chapter one, says, um, and he's again reminding Timothy, Second uh, Timothy chapter one and verse six. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. You know, you have this gift. You have received this gift. What are what are gifts given for? You know, that they might edify people and glorify God. And so, in the pursuit and plan of God, you know, you're going to be edifying people, uh, building up people, and and glorifying God. So, uh, he's saying, you know, stir up that gift that has been lying idle. Stir up that gift, and look at the next verse, verse seven. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So, so something from within <clears throat> is caused Timothy to not really actively uh, go out and do that, right? He knew these were the prophecies. He knew these were things that were, you know, dropped into his spirit by the laying on of hands. But um, there's something that was stopping Timothy from actively going into the plans and purposes of God. So Tim, Paul had to write and say, you know, Timothy, stir up. I remind you to stir up those gifts that were actually, you know, given by the laying on of hands. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So there have been some inhibitions from within Timothy, and it's because of fear, maybe fear of being rejected, whatever, be that fear, fear of failure, whatever it is that is holding you back. God has not given us. So if God has not given us, why are you holding on to that? Right? If God has not given it, you just reject it. You can't put it aside and journey into the purposes that God has for you in that place. Mm -hmm. Journey into the fullness that God has for you um, in that uh, place, in that season of life in your ministry. That's what you know. Paul is encouraging. Right. So also for us, like in our uh, uh, in our planning, uh, well, we we planned out something and we have heard the voice of God and we put things together, and uh, well, the, that's good. But the second part of it and the important part of it is to journey into it intentionally, um, uh, you know, walk into it or pursue. The word is pursue. Pursue the plan. Pursue the purposes of God. Well, it won't be smooth sailing. There could be other things hindering, challenging, um, you know, from outside, from within. But we we press on, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. Any questions? We have a minute. Any questions? Okay, so we'll, we'll stop here. And... Um, yeah, let me just stop the recording as well.